Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead and today, we're gonna chat for a little bit because uh, we, we get a question asked with a good deal of regularity. Um, being that we're on a homestead, and we raise a lot of our, our, our food, including proteins, mm -hmm. um, we get asked this question a lot. Mm -hmm. And that is, how do you raise your own animals uh, and not get attached to them, especially when it's time to harvest? That's, that is a tough thing. Um, in, in when we first started doing it, it was, it was really challenging, but the, the first thing that we had grown, raised, um, t for our own protein were chickens. Well, we knew one way that we could not get attached to them is not give them cute, fluffy names. We yeah. named them all food. We had chickens named Sweet and Sour, <laughs> Teriyaki, General So, oh, yeah. Original extra and Extra Crispy. crispy. And, so, well, you know, and that's a real tongue-in-cheek way to approach right. it, but what we did not do was treat them like pets. No. We did not. We didn't snuggle up with them and get all, you know, huggy, kissy. Oh, do you don't do that with chickens? Well, anyway, but. okay. Well, I think we need to back up though, because I think for them to understand how we came to the decision of raising our own food is important to this conversation. Right. We, um, I don't even know how long ago. It has to be ten years ago. We started seeing a lot, a lot of the videos where commercial food production were re ridiculously abusive yeah. to the animals and all of the big names that you know, the T word and the all P of the, the P and, word and yeah. all of those companies, you know, we were seeing those behind the scenes videos on how those animals were treated and it was beyond deplorable. Right. And not only how they were treated, but what they were fed, the medica medications oh that gosh. they were given. Um, hormones, things like that. And now I know that you can get organic versions of this now. Uh, that wasn't the case when we started. But still, the abuses mm -hmm. Those are, are there. Those still occur, whether and it's organic or not. Yeah, the organic label doesn't mean that these are just nicely treated chickens, and neither does no. free range. No, there's a huge difference between cage-free and free range. Mm -hmm. Cage-free means that they're still inside a house Oh, they're not yeah. stuck in a little cage like this. But it does not mean that they're given any more space. No, no. They're all, you know, 300 chickens per... Crammed in a small barn. Small, yeah, small little <clears throat> hutch. So when we had seen all of these things, we knew we had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Either we're not going to eat meat because these animals are treated so horrifically that we're either not going to eat meat or, number two, is... We're going to raise them ourselves because we're going to treat them with respect and we're going to treat them with dignity. We're going to care for those animals. Right. Um, and then the way we looked at it was, you know, God's provided us this source of protein, mm -hmm. um, but we are going to do our very best to make sure that the only day of their life that they have to go through any pain is that time, mm -hmm. that brief, just moment when, right. when they're processed. Yes. We care for them. We fed them very well. We fed, we, I mean, we made sure that they were safe away from predators, you know. Protect them. Yeah, yeah. we protect them and, and keep them safe and, and give them plenty of food and water. And, and and here's one that a lot of commercial places don't do is they actually get to be outside in the sun. Yeah. You know, and have shade and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And so we, we had to make that decision for us. Right. That if we're going to consume meat as protein, it would have to be us. Right, right. And so fast forward through a lot of the learning process. Um, when we went to process our first chickens, I, I can, I'll speak for myself, but you speak from your experience. Well, our first set of chickens we took to a uh, processing place. And that was horrible. And that was absolutely horrible. It was, I think, 2012. It scarred David. It was David and I took them because Brad was working, so David and I went. And he was how old at the time? He was in fifth grade. Yeah. And maybe sixth grade. Um, anyhow, 
Um, him and I drove the chickens a half an hour to go take them to the place where you, they process them for you. Well, as we take them out of our dog cage, because it was a dog kennel, and then put them into this crate. I mean, him and I both had tears because it was like, okay, these are our chickens and... And yes, they're meant to be food, but right. not like this. No, not like this. This is not the way we wanted to have our chickens taken care of and, and have them processed. So from that time on, when we raise our meat birds or our older hens, it's time for them to... To go. To go. Then we're going to do it in a kind and caring way. and With the least amount of stress, exactly. least amount of suffering. Exactly. And um, so, but... That was the moment, that was like the, the moment where it was like, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna have chicken, we're raising our own chicken. Right. If we're gonna have pork, we're gonna raise our own pork and, and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, so not getting attached, it, after that moment when we just decided, okay, we're gonna do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, the first run of meat birds, chickens were the first thing that we actually yeah, did we ourselves. Raised, yeah, we raised a set of meat birds. Was it twenty? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had never killed anything like that ever. I mean, I've never even been hunting yet, and I want to learn. Right. But um, I had never killed any animal other than like bugs. Right. And uh, so I, I honestly, I had a hard time with it. But what we did do is we got all of our equipment ready to go mm -hmm. and we we circled up and we said a prayer of thanks mm -hmm. and we thank God for the way that he's provided for us and we asked that that they go through the least amount of stress and suffering as possible mm -hmm. and we actually did what's considered a kosher way of processing the chickens that that's you know it's not like chopping their head off with a, a hatchet or something and then they bleed and scoot all around. Right. There's a thing called a kill cone. And it basically, you put the chicken in there upside down and their head pops out here. And what you do is you just nick the arteries. And they don't do anything. They just sit there and kind of, the, the heart's pumping it. Yeah. See, if you cut the head off, then it stops the heart pumping. And if you do that, you're not the the animal's not going to bleed out properly. There'll be a lot of pockets of blood in the exactly. animal. Exactly. If you just nick the artery, that heart the heart is still pumping, and that blood is coming is all the coming all the way out of the animal. And we chose that method of doing it because of that issue, mm -hmm. but also it's we're told that that is the least amount of stress that they can have because when they realize that something bad is going on. Mm -hmm. That last two or three seconds, it's they. That's it. It's already over. It's just they. They go. They realize something's wrong, and then they'll try to. They'll shake around just a little bit, but then they're gone. Yeah. So it is a very minimal um, shock to the animal. It's very quick and easy. But to continue back with the actual question, not getting um, attached, mm -hmm. it was. Um, I think necessity. Mm -hmm. Because we had to answer that question. If you're going to have chicken, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to get over it. Right. right. It's a choice you have to make. Am I going to support these companies that treat their, their animals um, very inhumanely? Or am I going to raise them myself and know what they're fed and treat them very respectfully? Um, you have to make that choice. Yeah, you have to make that choice. And for us, it was a very easy choice. But it was hard in process. It, it, it is a definitely a difficult process to go through. It took us a couple of years um, and a couple of runs of taking care of the chickens that, you know. I mean, it is, it is a definitely an odd experience mm -hmm. when you've never done it. I mean, I had a hard time. I was shaking. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not ashamed to say I was, I was freaked out. Right. But now we, we have a lot more of a process. We have an understanding and we know what to do, and we're not we're not worried about you know. Oh my gosh, did I just make that animal hurt so long? Right. No. No. Um, I will say this though is that um, we have not done anything larger than anything that. larger than chickens, no. and I'm guessing that I mean we've taken our pigs to an actual butcher. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I would imagine that that's got to be more difficult and and things that are cute like rabbits have got yeah. to be more difficult right you just and honestly I think it's you just kind of have to grow a thick skin and from the get-go you realize this is not this a pet. animal is not a pet this animal is going to be our food circle of life it, yes exactly now our cow Macy provides us with milk if it comes a time when she's unable to provide us with milk, then she will, again, that circle of life, she will become food. But that probably will be a little a more difficult. Time. But that will be a really long time from now. I mean, right. she's a young cow. She's doing fantastic with her health and, and all of that. So it's it's a non-issue right, right now. Uh, so the only other advice for those of you who might be going, I don't know if I could do that. Um, just know that it is not easy, No. but it is a choice you have to make. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing, like I said, well, mama said earlier, naming them names that do not make them into pets in your brain. Right. Don't name them cute, fuzzy names. Or don't names. even name them. Yeah, that might even be better. Right. There's chicken number one, two, and three. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, but that's the best advice I think I can muster in terms of, you just got to get it in your head. Mm -hmm. Don't treat them like fuzzy little here. Let's play around. Yeah, no, and and be kind to the animal, but don't snuggle up with the animal. And, yeah, and become all buddy buddy with him. We did you know? that with with our first run of chickens that we had not intended on having as food. They were just going to be egg layers. Right, right. But they got to the point where they weren't laying eggs anymore. And so then what do you do? You're not going to just let them. You know, some Eat people, tons of food. and don't get me wrong, some people out there who are going, how could you possibly do that? Well, here's the thing. Those chickens were never meant to be pets. No. Um, and there are people that have that, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But those chickens were always meant to feed our family. Right. And In one so, way or another. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's how we can kind of get that rationale that it's, you know what, circle of life. Mm -hmm. Um and I think you just gotta you gotta keep a, a healthy barrier, right? That you're not gonna get too involved, and that's easier said than done in the beginning, right? But it gets easier. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I hope that that um, kind of answers. I, I think. Do you feel like we've? I, I'm hoping that it, that it, that our video today has explained a little bit how we go about. Or at least how we do it. Right. You know, and other people. You know, we know we know farmers who around here where it's just it's no different than a, a tool, like mm -hmm. a wrench or a screwdriver. Right. And I hope I don't ever get that, you know, far down the path where no. we don't really connect the dots as much no. anymore. No. Um, but that's where we're at. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I hope that it helps you guys out. Mm -hmm. And if um if you have something positive to say, put it down below. Please do. If you have something negative to say. Don't. Yeah, if you can't say something nice, just keep it to yourself. Listen to mom. Mom's right. So I'm Brad. As always. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing day.